Well, folks, it looks like Netflix is absolutely desperate for content right now, and I'm not exaggerating. Grab your popcorn and let's talk about it because Netflix is not so happy with their current Hollywood story. You see, CFO Spencer Newman is singing about the fact that, well, they just need to get back to work. They need everybody to get back to work. So whew, I'm not sure how to how to go about this. I really can't mince words. So here we go. <laughs> So the current Hollywood strikes, because there's two of them, and there may be more, <laughs> are unlike a lot of unwanted sequels that we've been getting for a while now. They just keep coming back. They're bad for business, and according to the CFO at Netflix, Newman, they're leaving a whole lot of folks out of a job, and people within his own company. The movie industry's version of musical chairs isn't satisfying anybody, because nobody's winning, and the music stopped a long, long time ago. So why is Netflix so eager to get back into action? Well, there's a lot of different reasons, but let's focus in on some. To keep entertainment going, you need a, an entire team of people. You have to have writers, producers, directors, actors. You have to have all of the people that are below the line. You have to have people that do lighting, people that are gaffers, people who do you name it, people who handle all of the different duties on a set. You need them all. You need them all to keep working. You need them to keep available. And you don't want them to go out and find another job. And that's a fear because a lot of these people are being pushed to move into a different industry. Maybe they'll work over in tech. Maybe they'll start their own business. But a lot of them may just move on. Well, to say that it takes a village to create binge-worthy shows, that's 100% accurate. Right now, the village is locked in a staring car test with a bunch of strike picket lines. And those picketers are in a weird position right now. They voluntarily left the jobs that they loved. What's really strange is right now, you have a bill moving through rapidly through the legislative process in the state of California on its way to the Senate to decide whether or not the safety net that's supposed to be there for people who lose their jobs involuntarily, well, the, apparently Hollywood wants to make a grab at that safety net themselves which seems a little unfair. And it does take away motivation for some people to, well, negotiate or be pressured to negotiate because let's be very clear, there are some disingenuous things happening behind the scenes right now. But back to Netflix, you see, they know that the magic happens in entertainment when everybody comes together to make it. They're trying to get back to business as usual. And all they've got right now is a bunch of stuff that they've bought or a bunch of things that they previously produced. Now they can certainly acquire more content and a lot of the former walled garden nascent streaming services like uh, Disney Plus and HBO Max, they're looking for places to put their old material. So Netflix may win there, but they like making their own stuff and it keeps them from being reliant on these studios who seem a little fickle right now. The service itself has grown quite a bit in subscriber numbers, a lot of that due to the fact that the password uh, sharing was ended. A lot of people decided they would just sign up for their own account. So in a way that kind of worked out. But Netflix also has stories of their own to tell, and they just can't do it without qualified people. Of course, the elephant in the room that nobody wants to point a finger at is the Writers Guild of America, which started their strike on May 2nd, and SAG AFTRA, who joined in with them on July 14th. And they're literally tied up in a very strange version of chicken right now, with unqualified negotiators quite possibly leading at least one of these guilds. Nobody's talking about the AMPTP, of course, which is the other side of the equation. They represent essentially Netflix and all of the other studios, including Amazon Prime. So essentially all of the big studios are now struck companies, which means they can't make anything. And Netflix is kind of trying to do its own thing. They're trying to work it out individually. And I think you're gonna start seeing that. I think you're also gonna start seeing it on the guild side of things as well, as there were some rumors, albeit they seem to have been false, that showrunners were considering walking away from the guild and working directly for studios. Of course, there's a twist, always. and. Netflix is not exactly sweating bullets, like I said. They've got a plan, and it, again, it has to do with all the stuff I mentioned before. Their international opportunities, where they just grab things from other countries, like India and Korea. They kind of have an advantage that no other studio out there 
right now has. And that's where it gets interesting, because while the strike is causing chaos for everybody, it might actually be helping Netflix's piggy bank more so than any of these other studios, despite what they tried to tell you during their quarterlies. Their production costs are falling because international productions and buying it, acquiring it from them is less expensive. It's uh, pushing their cash flow up naturally, unlike the other studios who are gonna have to take that cash flow and sink it back into the material that they just haven't been producing. It's still squeezing their profits. I mean, they can't escape that. In the end, Netflix wants the same thing every other studio does, and that's for there to be a deal struck that everybody can afford and everybody can get behind. But at least for Netflix, the future of entertainment there isn't on hold completely. So, will Hollywood and Netflix bury the hatchet sooner than anybody else? That's a good question. But there's definitely one thing for sure. We know where the most likely binge-worthy series is going to drop. It'll be over on Netflix. Anyway, that's it for today's video, but if you'd like, I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. Are you about ready for the strike to end? Do you think that Netflix and maybe Amazon and a couple others are more likely to negotiate outside of a lot of these deals with the guilds directly? Do you think AMPTP is negotiating in good faith? Do you think the guilds are? It's an awful lot of questions. I'm just looking for answers. And with that, be sure to take care of yourself, take care of others, wash your hands, of course, because it's good hygiene. And until next time, see ya!